It's the Bradfield Weather Podcast, a special edition underwritten by McAllen Construction. McAllen Construction, from the first dig to the last nail. I am Dan Lavallo. He is meteorologist Brad Field. The reason we are making this a special edition is because it is Sunday, January the 28th. And Brad, here we are. Uh, we're getting snow in northwest Connecticut, uh, where you are. I don't know quite what the weather is, but we've got a weather event going on, don't we? Yeah, 9.30, Dan, uh, 9.30 a.m. on Sunday, January 28th. You're snowing up in Torrington. Uh, I'm seeing some snow here now in East Windsor, uh, and that's pretty new. That's just happened in the last five minutes or so. So uh, what we've got is snow going on uh, in in parts of Connecticut, but the vast majority of the state right now is still seeing rain. Now, the weather headline, Dan, out of this thing is what a waste, because we are getting QPF, and what that means is quantified precipitation forecast. That's what QPF stands for. But most of the computer models are printing out around an inch of QPF. So you usually assume a 10 to 1 ratio for snow. So if you just move the decimal point, uh, that would pretty much give everybody about 10 inches of snow were this thing going to be all snow. Now, here's the problem, Dan, and I was talking to you about this off air a little bit. I was just looking at the dew points all around. Mainly, they're around 34 degrees right now at Windsor Locks, in uh, Meriden, for example, and a dew point of 33 up in Westfield. Now, what does that mean? It means that if the atmosphere is 100% saturated, that's what the ground surface temperature would be. So, in other words, if the relative humidity was 100%, The temperature in Westfield, Massachusetts now, right over the border, would be 33. In Windsor Locks, it would be 34. In Meriden, it would be 34. So here's the problem. If that is as cold as it's going to get today, 33 or 34, even though it's snowing, it's going to have a heck of a time accumulating. So the whole thing I'm saying about this, uh, this QPF and you, you normally think of a 10 to 1 ratio of liquid and what would that convert to in snow, I'm using just kind of arbitrarily a 5 to 1 ratio. And I'm thinking what we're going to have, Dan, is slop. Now, if I say to you, I think at your house, you're going to have three inches of slush accrue. You would, or, or, or say three inches of snow accrue. You would think, oh, that's not bad, Brad. That's not bad. But wait till you get out there tomorrow morning and try to shovel it. It's going to be like holding all of this water content. So it's the proverbial heart attack snow. It's the, the, the snow that's really hard to move. So I think this is what we're going to be seeing Uh, Now, all of us are not going to see it. It's a very complicated forecast. And the thing is, it's all over a degree or two. If we were, say, three to five degrees colder statewide right now, Dan, I would be predicting pretty much categorically, uh, say, an eight to 12 inch snowfall for the whole state. But we're not. So we've got to make adjustments here kind of on the fly. I mean, it's going to be different here where I live in the upper Connecticut River Valley uh, compared to where you live, for example, in the Northwest Hills. Elevation is going to play a role. So we'll get into all of that as we move along. Well, and again, we're putting this together on Sunday morning, January the 28th. Uh, From a storm perspective, let's go to our On the Weather Map segment. What can you tell us? Okay, so midday, Dan, let's say 1 o'clock today, uh, a storm will be off Atlantic City, New Jersey. Now, normally, if you're in late January and you have a storm tracking from Atlantic City, New Jersey to the benchmark, which is 40 north, 70 west, that's a position south and east of Nantucket, you typically can get a good snowstorm out of that. 
I mean, there's nothing wrong with the track on this thing. The track is really good. It's just the fact that we don't have much in the way of cold air around. So uh, that's uh, that's the problem with the storm. So uh, 1 o'clock today, Dan, with the low off Atlantic City, I expect snow, rain, mix, um, predominantly snow, I think, uh, toward the Massachusetts border. So the northern third of Connecticut, Dan, where you live in Torrington, where I live in East Windsor, I think that's going to see snow. Now, um, for central and southern Connecticut, I think it'll be predominantly rain that may occasionally mix with snow in central Connecticut. So that's where I think we'll be at one o'clock today. Now, by seven o'clock tonight, 7 p.m., so it's dark and it's a Sunday evening, we've got the low off Atlantic City um, and south of Long Island. I'm looking at, you know, pretty good snow going on in the northwest hills and the northeast hills. Um, I think we'll see a snowy, rainy mix along the I-84 corridor. So it is creeping south. The, uh, the snow line, the mix line is creeping to the south, but still rain in southern Connecticut. So along the I-95 corridor, um, the snow lovers that live in Bridgeport and New Haven and Old Lyme and Old Saybrook and Groton and New London, uh, I'm sorry about this, but it looks like it's going to be predominantly rain for you. Now, by 1 in the morning, Dan, the storm moves to the benchmark, 40 north, 70 west, normally a great position. But I think uh, let's use I-84 kind of diagonally bisecting the state as the divider. North of uh, I-84, I think it'll be a snowy um, mix with maybe some sleet pellets and maybe a, a, an occasional raindrop. And uh, south and east of I-84, rain trying to mix with snow as we head toward daybreak on Monday. 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, Monday morning, the low will be east of Cape Cod. There'll be areas of light snow and flurries around, but uh, most of the storm will be over. Um, and by 7 p.m. tomorrow, the storm is long gone out in the western Atlantic. And by 7 a.m. on a Tuesday, high pressure over eastern Canada. It looks like it'll be sunny here in about 32 uh, during the day on Tuesday. So that's the, the storm track, Dan, and the Im impacts as the storm tracks along. Brad, I know we like to look at the uh, low and high ends as far as accumulation is concerned. What can you tell us about this storm? Dan, um, the National Weather Service does a, a, a point forecast. What do I mean by a point forecast? Like a latitude point, longitude point. But they'll say, okay, uh, let's do Torrington, Connecticut, for example. And their point forecast is uh, 3.2 inches. Now you say to me, Brad, you know, this is not a, a big deal. But like I said to you, Dan, that 3.2 inches is going to be holding a lot of water content. So if, 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 so it'll be that heavy, wet slop that you're trying to shovel out uh, tomorrow morning. So uh, that is the point forecast. That's what you should expect. But what is this is another thing they do. What is the reasonable high end? Like if everything, you know, worked according to how a snow lover would like it to work, what is the probably the most you could expect in Torrington? That comes down at seven inches. Uh, Waterbury, the point forecast is 1.1. The high end is three inches of slop. So you can see it makes a difference where you are uh, latitudinally in the state of Connecticut. So Waterbury is, you know, uh, what would you say, Dan, 25, 30 miles south of you? About 20 so, miles south, yep. Yeah, so see, you're that 20 miles further north, so you could end up with that 33-degree dew point, and whereas Waterbury ends up with a 34-degree dew point, just say. So you can see that you would be marginally better off in terms of getting accumulating snow and so forth. Now, by the time you get down to Danbury, the point forecast is only for a little bit over a half an inch of slush. 
Um, and the high end for Danbury would be about two inches. Uh, the I-95 corridor, nothing is predicted. They think it's going to be probably totally all rain. And the high end would be less than an inch. So um, if you're a snow lover living along the I-95 corridor, you can um, – reasonably think that you wake up to nothing, but you, you could have a, a slight coating on the ground tomorrow morning. Meriden is around an inch accumulation, uh, three inches on the high end. Hartford around an inch, um, four inches on the high end. Uh, Norwich only about a half an inch. Uh, again, that, that half inch line goes from about Danbury over to Norwich. Um, the high end is two inches. Windsor Locks, which is uh, representative of the upper Connecticut River Valley in, Mass in uh, Connecticut, um, predicting about one and a half inches of slop for Bradley. Um, the high end would be five inches of accumulation. Uh, Willimantic is about an inch with a high end three inches. And Union um, is the highest point forecast I could see in the state. Uh, but, of course, they have a high elevation in the northeast hills of Connecticut. They've got a 4.1-inch point forecast with a high-end amount of 6 inches of snow. So uh, that's kind of a, a fun exercise to do, Dan. So, in other words, I'm saying to you up in Torrington, you can expect 3.2 inches of snow around that, you know, give or take a little bit. But you could, if if everything goes right, you could get as much as seven inches. So um, that's what the National Weather Service is working on. It's been experimental the last few years, but uh, I find it kind of fun, and I, I, I like to look at it. As you know, Brad, uh, because as you are predicting, this is going to be that heavy slop, that wet slop. If you get three inches or you even get seven inches, it's difficult to move that snow, even with a snowblower, because it's such a heavy snow. Right. Um, I've never owned a snowblower, Dan. Um, we have a plow uh, guy come, and, <laughs> um, you know, I, w I will do the, the touch-up shoveling yep. um, and shovel the walkways and stuff. But, yeah, I from what I understand, Dan, this is the really dangerous snow if you have a snowblower because it keeps clogging. Right. And your tendency is to you want to put your hand in there to get the get the uh, clog out, but uh, that is obviously not a good idea. No, no. Uh, but having never having having never owned a snowblower, I, I don't you know I don't want to try to go into any um, preaching about that. But I I I'm looking out the window now, Dan. It is just ooh, big flakes and it's snowing yeah. at a good clip here. But the gr the grass is completely showing. I mean, it's it's not it's not sticking, best I can tell. Well, our grass is covered here, and it's been snowing the way uh, in East Windsor. It's it's been snowing that way here in uh, Torrington in Northwest Connecticut for a while. But that said, uh, I know you touched upon it briefly during the on the weather map segment. But can you time out the storm for us? Yeah, well, obviously it's in progress now, Dan, and um, I think the timing on the precipitation coming down at a good clip is through the day today and through the evening. Now, once the storm gets by our longitude, um, the, the surface wind will go a little more around to the north. So that would pull the cold air down the Connecticut River Valley uh, and what I mean by cold air is instead of 34 degree temperatures, uh, maybe pull down some 32 degree temperatures overnight. So it may be able to stick a little better later tonight when the surface wind goes more around to the north. But the problem is we're running out of precipitation by then. Um, we will have still some snow going on after midnight tonight, but it will be a much lighter uh, intensity. So um, I, I do think that uh, once we get past midnight tonight, the storm will start to taper and it should be completely over by about eight or nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Now that is going to put superintendents into a big pickle. Um, I would I would definitely think that there will be a lot of delays tomorrow morning, um, especially in the northern half of the state because of the, the heavy slush out there and so forth, and the, the roads will not be good in, 
in northern Connecticut, especially the northwest and northeast hills. So I do think that it'd be a tough call for the superintendents tomorrow morning. Um, we may see some, some uh, I think we'll see numerous delays, uh, but we might even see some cancellations too, depending on if we tend to trend to these high-end amounts. I think what it's going to come down to is how effective the cleanup operation is, particularly since this is a sloppy snow, and uh, how effective they'll be in cleaning up not only the roadways, but the school parking lots and uh, around the schools themselves. So I think that's going to be the challenge when it comes to the superintendent's call, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, Dan. I think uh, I, 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 I do think, you know, I don't like to say it because I don't want to get the kids all excited and <laughs> have them have them. Uh, one thing I learned in this job is uh, you, you got to keep the expectations down. <laughs> you know, if, if 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 Bradfield comes on television and starts telling people, oh, I think the school will be canceled tomorrow and then they don't study for their test or whatever. <laughs> I think my. I think my name is being used in vain <laughs> in homes around the state. So, Well, advice to all the school uh, kids, do your homework. <laughs> yeah, and then just enjoy it tomorrow if you don't have to go in. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that said, as we put a wrap on things then, what is the forecast as we put this together on Sunday morning, January the 28th? All right, Dan, we've got... Um, you know, I'm kind of uh, revising my forecast on the fly. I will be very honest with you. I was looking at the nine o'clock observations this morning and Westfield, which is considerably to my north and west here in, um, in uh, East Windsor, and Bradley and Hartford and Meriden were all reporting rain. And then all of a sudden, just when you called at about 925, it turned to snow here. Um, what I had written down is for today, rain, except rain and snow mix in the northern third of Connecticut. Well, I guess I'm going to have to say snow for the northern third of Connecticut uh, with that rainy mix uh, displaced to the south now, probably down toward Hartford. And then south of Hartford, uh, mainly rain. Temperatures, the critical temperatures, they will be in the mid-30s today. Now, if, you're, if you want a big snowstorm, you'd want that temperature to be 31 or 32. Well, unfortunately, it's going to be 34 or 35. So that's going to cut down on accumulations a lot because as the snowflakes are falling and hitting, some portion of them are melting because of these these temperatures that are above 32. So uh, that's the deal on today. Tonight we'll see snow, or if you live in southern Connecticut, mix changing to snow, temperatures in the low 30s. Monday, snow showers ending by mid-morning, and then just kind of cloudy in the afternoon, temperatures in the upper 30s. As far as accumulations go, Dan, uh, this is my forecast now, not the not that point forecast from the National Weather Service. I'm predicting less than an inch of slush in southern Connecticut, say within 20 miles of of uh, Long Island Sound. You get inland from there, uh, just say just south of uh, Interstate 84, and up the Connecticut River Valley, up toward from Meriden to uh, Hartford, and on up toward. Uh, Windsor Locks and the Massachusetts border, one to three inches of slop in the lower elevations. And then as you head off into the northwest and northeast hills of Connecticut, three to six inches of accumulation. I would say if your home is at sea level above 500 feet, uh, you've got a really good shot of getting three to six inches of heavy, wet snow. So that's what I think for the storm. Um, Tuesday looks partly sunny temperatures in the low 30s, which is about seasonable, maybe slightly below. And then on Wednesday, partly sunny and temperatures in the mid 30s. And then, of course, uh, next Thursday, we'll be back with our regularly scheduled podcast. And at that point, we'll look forward in time and see if there's anything coming uh, in the pipeline. All right, my friend. Well, to you and Sandy and our podcast audience, be safe, particularly as you're out there traveling, because it's going to be a challenge there's no question about it. No question about it, Dan. You and Susan have a nice day. 
Um, if you're listening to this podcast on Sunday, uh, enjoy the football games and, uh, and, you know, everyone, as, as Dan said, take it easy. It's going to be, I think, a pretty rough commute in Northern Connecticut, uh, Monday morning early. All right, Brad. The Brad Field Weather Podcast has been underwritten by McAllen Construction. McAllen Construction, from the first dig to the last nail. And remember, McAllen Construction does snow removal.